Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Odin's Movie Blog. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well, and man, oh man, uh, I cannot wait to make some nice, nice beta trolls upset today because, once again, I am talking about Captain Marvel. Oh, you can't. Why are you being so mean about it? Excuse me. Every time I open up my videos, what is it that I say? I am the critic who is a cynic. I, I make it very clear what kind of a personality that I have, and it's a very cynical one, but it's also one that's based in reality. So basically people are saying, how can you say all of these things and make all the speculation before the movie even comes out? Well, it's because we're able to do that in general with almost any film that ever comes out. But there is no denying that Captain Marvel is going to be a big movie no matter what, because it is indeed an MCU film. It's one that people are talking about and they're speaking and talking it up so much Again, as I pointed out the other day, there were people who were tweeting out saying it's the greatest movie ever. And they're going to go keep on saying this. So, yes, absolutely I'm going to talk about it. And as far as my speculation is concerned, um, it's the same kind of speculation that you yourself have when you say, I think it's going to be great. Okay, then th th you're entitled to your opinion. I don't think there's enough data to back up your points. I think there's a hell of a lot more data to back up mine. But, hey, here we are. And what's also interesting, too, is that some of these trolls that are attacking my videos by disliking it and doing all those other things, they totally just don't even watch the actual videos themselves. If they did, they would see that actually when it comes to my own personal box office projections, I think that the movie is going to be profitable. There are a lot of people that disagree with me on that point, but at least they do so respectfully. There's a lot of people who very much lowball the score saying, oh, it's not going to make that much money. My personal score is I think it's going to make between 450 and 650 tops. Which, guess what, would make it profitable. It only needs to make $400 million worldwide in order to break even. I think it's going to do that quite easily. I think it's going to make money. The question is, how much money is it going to make? And also, what do you consider to be a success? Keep in mind, these people that I'm talking about here, the ones that have been going after me in the comments, and they're like, oh man, look at how clever I am. Oh man, look how awesome I am. Let me go hide back in my safe space. Oh, man, I'm going to unsub your channel now because, oh, man. Again, guys, you do what you want to do. I'm going to keep doing what I do because I have never been disingenuous about who I am. I've always made it very clear how I stand on various things. And also, I've always promised you guys to give you my complete, my complete and unadulterated thoughts on all variety of film and pop culture. I've never said, I've never held back. I've never said, mm, I don't want to say this because I'm worried about the backlash. That's not how I roll. If you want to watch those kind of channels, if you want to see people that are just going to say, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am, yes, Disney, yes, Star Wars, yes, Marvel, uh huh, oh, it's great, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Oh, look, here I have an opinion. It's not too bad, but okay, you can go check out the Colliders and you can check out all the other shill channels out there. That's not me. I'm not going to show it up for you. I'm going to be <laughs> completely honest with you. And based on everything that we have, which at this point, what do we have? We have crap ton of trailers. No one's going to deny that the trailer game and that the uh, marketing campaign for this movie has been small. This has probably been one of the biggest marketing campaigns, I would say, for any movie up to this point with the number of spots we've been getting. Just yesterday, Brie Larson herself gave us a totally generic chain scene, train scene that we've never seen before. And somehow, even though she's one of the strongest persons in the galaxy, she somehow hangs off a train and everyone's like, oh, well, she just hasn't reached her binary form yet. You just have no idea. She, she's still learning her powers. Oh, really? Then how is it that she can shoot freaking fireball laser her beams out of her hands but she can't pull herself up from a train please explain that to me please oh it's not her binary no the fact that she's able to shoot lasers out of her hand punch a hole in a train and yet she has to struggle just to get herself up off the train and hang on for a few seconds makes no sense whatsoever so you see what see what i'm doing here i'm taking one scene and guess what? In this extended look, it is the entire scene. There aren't pieces that we're missing from this one scene. And so, therefore, what I'm able to say is, okay, here's what we have. We have Captain Marvel getting her butt kicked by some random dude, probably a scroll, who doesn't look like a scroll because my, my guess is, is that they wanted to save money on this project and say, oh, look, the scrolls, because they're shape-shifting, guess what? We can have them just be looking like actual human beings. So that way, it saves us money on the overall, you know, you know production budget when it comes to doing CGI characters and stuff, Right? Ever thought about that? <laughs> now, of course, that's speculation, but the actual scene itself. We have her fighting a scroll. Scroll, the, the fight scene choreography is not good. It's boring. It's bland. And they, oh, that's just your your like your opinion, dude. Go ahead, go ahead and look at it. Please tell me that you've seen you, you let me know if you have seen worse fight scenes than that. Let me know if there is not more exciting fight scenes that they could have had. 
Put the same scenario. There have been plenty of movies that have done the train, uh, the train fight scene. Please tell me one of those examples that did not nearly look as good or didn't have as good fight choreography. Oh, we haven't seen the whole trailer yet. Again, I understand that. What I'm merely pointing out is that there is enough data out there. And also the fact that we now have people who have seen the actual movie, have seen the early cut, the early release of the film, and are putting their thoughts out there. And all of their thoughts are, oh my gosh, she's a woman. Like seriously, like, <laughs> like so that's that's pretty much how these comments read. And then you have the other one saying it's the greatest movie of all time ever. And oh my God, the cat. These are the early reactions from people who have seen the movie. And so therefore, if I take that data and I take the other data that we've received from the trailers and I take the other data that we have from years of history, which interestingly enough for Carol Danvers as Captain Marvel is only about six years of history because she's only been Captain Marvel since 2012. And since that iteration, she's been rebooted four times. And since that iteration and all those different reboots, no one's been buying the comic. But no, let's not talk about that. Let's not talk about how it is that this is the first of all the various female characters they have in the MCU, this is somehow the first that's going to get her own independent film. Tell me, oh yeah, you don't know, ignore all of her history. Ignore all of everything about her character's past and how she has essentially been woke since her very inception. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take the data that we have from the comic books from the trailers, from the early reactions, and I'm gonna meld them all together and paint a picture for you. Now, once again, you can still be excited for this film. I'm not telling you. Again, no one has the power to tell you, you can't be excited for this film. That makes you a bad person. I'm not saying that at all. I just would merely ask the question, what are you excited for? Like, please explain to me, what about this? Like, seriously, what about this just blankness makes you excited for this character? When, when you have people coming out of the theater saying, oh my god, guys, the cat, Goose, is amazing. And then your instant thought is, well, that's because Goose isn't a cat. And they're, they're just in surprise because Goose ends up to be, uh, you know, an alien creature that has a pocket dimension in his mouth. Which, again, we knew from the comics. But again, guess what? That was not introduced in the comics until 2012. <laughs> like, the actual character of Goose, then in the comics, Chewie, was actually introduced in 2006 in a flashback. But wasn't introduced nearly as an alien until it was eventually rebooted once again. So let's just go ahead and be, let's, let's, let's be honest with ourselves here. Like seriously, let's just at least be honest with the history of the comics. Let's be honest here about what we actually have in front of us. And what we have in front of us is we have a movie that is being over, <laughs> over promoted in my own opinion. That is definitely an opinion. It's being over promoted. It's being overhyped. And when you do that to any film, when you do that to any film, it, it's usually a bad thing. Because if the film is not able to even match the hype that's around it, then it's not going to, <laughs> it's going to end up disappointing you a great deal. I remember when Fan Four Stick, for example, was coming out, the Fantastic Four reboot, and people were very excited about it because guess what? The cast looked awesome. The effects overall looked okay. You're like, oh, the trailers, you know, you know, the trailers always, you know, make it a little, it's more compressed, and so it doesn't look as good. But the actual footage, then that'll look good. But then you saw Fan Forest Stick, and you're like, oh man, this story is so bad. And of course, there are many reasons as to why that is the case. But with this film right here, again, same thing. We're able to speculate. We're able to say, okay, where is this going? How is this going to be? Let's look at the characters that they have, the origins of those characters, the actors that they've gotten portray those characters. Brie Larson, of which has been very vocal about how woke she is <laughs> on Twitter and other social media platforms. And also the history of her character is woke and therefore the and then you have the you know the heads of our marvel and the mcu and everything else saying that oh yeah we're going to be more diverse more diverse oh we're going to commit ourselves to the so-called four percent lie which if you want to see that video you can check out the video from yesterday though of course it's been totally demonetized because you know can't speak the truth here on youtube apparently but go ahead and check that out for yourself that is the current trajectory and history of this character and also what looks to be the future of the film now does that mean that the film's gonna bomb no not necessarily as I've admitted, I have admitted this countless times now, and I guarantee you that the same people who are going to attack this video are the same ones who aren't going to watch it up to this point. I'm talking to you right here. At no point have I said that this film is going to fail. By fail, I mean lose money. At no point have I done that. Other people in the comments might think that, and I think it's possible, because guess what? Anything's possible. If you were to ask anyone before Solo Star Wars Story came out that it was going to lose money, most people would say, you're crazy. Of course it's not going to lose money. And yet, where are you right now? Oh, of course it's not. Of course it's not going to be a fail. You have no idea what you're talking about. The movie hasn't even come out yet. Same thing happened with Solo. Where were you then? Oh, wait, that's right. You were still supporting channels like mine because you were okay when we were going after Solo. But when we go after your precious MCU or DCU or whatever fandom you're a part of, oh, I can't take any criticism whatsoever. 
No, again, I've been very fair here. I've gone after the DCEU films. I've gone after the MCU films when I've had to. I've gone after the Star Wars films when I have to. I am a fan of film. I'm a fan of film. I am a, fa- I am a film channel, and I will continue to talk about these things. But if you're going to try and tell me that everything that we've been given up to this point, from the history of the character to the c- countless numbers of, of trailers and promotions and everything like that, the fact that they are once again trying to paint this as the Black Panther, like, keep this in mind, this film has been painted as the Black Panther of 2019 by countless media sources. And yet every single time you try and find the comparisons, they're just not there. The same audience that came out for Black Panther is not going to be there completely for Captain Marvel. There, there isn't the same type of audience that those movies are going to appeal to. On top of that, you can just look to the GoFundMe pages that Brie Larson herself, on her thousands and thousands of followers on Twitter, has tweeted out constantly, has like pinned to her, her, her section, has pinned to her Twitter, and yet those that have been out for a month have only raised like a couple thousand dollars. Versus the Black Panther screenings that did bonkers and did great. Because guess what? There was an audience there that wanted to support that film. That film was truly important because in in true fashion, in actual historical fact, that was the first time that was an historical moment for the African-American community here in the United States of America. And some people have even fought me on that. People who support my channel have even fought me on that. But you cannot tell me, you cannot point to one example where a majority African-American or black cast with that kind of a budget with that kind of a stage, has been given that kind of a platform. You can't do it. And so, of course, that film is going to do very well among those communities. And then I've got the other people out there who say, are you trying to say that, that the only reason why it did well is because of, because of that reason? No. What I'm saying is that the reason why it outpaced movies, for, I mean, keep this in mind, Black Panther made more than Infinity War. And yet Infinity War, by everyone's standards, by the vast majority of fan standards, is the better film and the film of 2018, not Black Panther. So, so why is it that it didn't make as much domestically? Well, the reason why is because you had a group within the United States that was going out to support it in droves, in full support, buying screenings, buying screens itself, going out of their way to let this movie be seen by as many people as possible because it was important to them. And that makes total sense to me. And again, I have my own opinions about Black Panther. I've made it abundantly clear how I feel about Black Panther getting an Oscar nomination. I think it's totally because of racial politics. I've not made that a secret, but I'm also not going to deny reality. In the same way here, I'm not going to deny the reality here. Will the general public go out to see this film? Yes. Will generic MCU fans go out to see this? Yes. Will comic book fans go out to see this? Yes. But what I'm telling you is that in no point in history from the MCU so far has there ever been this much (laughs) tension, uh, you know, disinterest, etc., ever. And you can say that that's going to have this this kind of an impact or that kind of an impact all you want. But if you're going to try and tell me that no other MCU film has had what's going on here on this channel and other channels and all the comment sections and everything like that, if you're trying to tell me that that's never happened before, that's never happened before, please give me an example. Give me the data. And that is the reason, the atmosphere that we have around this film and the fact that you have a star in Brie Larson who is doubling down on it who is essentially provoking it by saying that I don't care what white men have to say. The white men should just go away. And she herself has demonized an entire group of people who also happen to be, you know, white men happen to probably be a huge portion of the fan base that would go out and support MCU films. Can go ahead and look to my comment section. Other than the trolls who are going to be trying to, you know, say whatever it is and, you know, get their shots out there and think that, oh, look how smart I am. Look at all the other comments that say, oh, I'm not going to see this movie. I have no interest in it. And guys, guess what? If you do have an interest in seeing this film, great. I'm not going to stop you. All I'm going to do, because again, this is my channel. These are my opinions. I'm not bond paid for by anyone. I give you my thoughts. If you like them, great. That's awesome. It's great to find people that you agree with. But if you don't agree with me, that's fine too. As long as you can engage respectfully and say, hey, you said this. Let me talk about this. Let's talk. I'm going to be like, all right, let's talk. But if you go out and say, Psh, this guy right here, talking to me about the third person when you're, t- when you're making a comment on my video, I'm sorry, but I'm going to call you out. And, and I might be, oh my gosh, rude to you, even though you were the first rude one in the first place. But looking at Captain Marvel, again, and the reason why I have it up on the wrap, for example, is because there's very likely going to be a chance since they are really wanting this film. Like, why do you think they are supporting this film so much? Why do you think they are marketing this film so much? Because they know that there is this tension going on. They know this is going to be one of the hardest sells that they've had because of a variety of different reasons, but also because of the placement of this movie. This movie comes out a month and a half before Endgame. comes out a month before Shazam. Shazam is not going to make more, in my own opinion. I don't think Shazam is going to make more than Captain Marvel is going to make. 
but it's still going to take away money from the box office because the Shaz Shazam is going to have a solid DCEU fan base that's going to show up to it no matter what. Not to mention the trailers have been fun. There's been nothing crazy or out of the world about the trailers that's making anyone really say, I don't want to go see that, you know, at least in large numbers. And so they need this film to do well, especially since they're putting their whole future, apparently, in her hands. But a lot of us look through that and we see, guys, this is the same thing that happened in Star Wars. Because that's the other critique I got. Oh, you know, you talk about, stay to your Star Wars movies. You know, this is a no. The reason why I'm talking about this specifically is because the same exact thing happened in Star Wars. They decided to, instead of focusing on making a good, compelling story, they said, the Force is female. The future is female. And that is not how you make a good story. Again, you can make strong female characters. There's, again, no one has a problem with that. If anyone has a problem with that in and in, in of itself, if that in isolation is the problem, well, then obviously that is some sexism going on there. But if your issue is, no, 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 this is a political motivation that they're trying to push these characters down our throats, and therefore they're pushing them past without even giving them good character development or character arcs, well, that's what we're going to call out. And that's what's happened. I mean, just look at the current state of Star Wars. We don't want that to happen to the MCU. That's the reason why we're talking about this, because so many things that are happening with Captain Marvel right now, and also in the media and everything going on behind the scenes, is very reminiscent. Is very reminiscent of that fact. So again... I don't think this film's going to flop. Does it have potential to? I would say there's a, there's a chance that any movie could flop for a variety of different reasons. We never know what's going to happen tomorrow. Some crazy thing could happen that could have affected that could affect it. Again, no one I thought no one thought Solo was going to like lose money, lose 200 million dollars at the box office. No one could have predicted that. And yet there was still a chance that it could have happened. I would say that there is less of a chance of it happening here just because you know solo is following the last jedi this is following ant-man and the wasp and infinity war which all were received very well and did very well but at the end of the day as i said this one also is the only or rather the first film that's really had any kind of established backlash and it's not just because she's a female character it's because if you look into the history of that character the fact that the only reason why they're making a captain marvel movie is because of a group of essentially feminazis in the comic industry pushing for it, the Carol Corps, the so-called Carol Corps, it makes you kind of worried a little bit, saying, all right, I don't want that mindset that got it here in the first place to be a part of the movie and also the future of the MCU. And also, it's still a part of Disney. And so if Disney's going that direction in every single one of their areas, MCU could be next. And if you want to know why I, you know, just kind of end things off, you want to know why. I have it in the 450 to 650 range is because when I look at all these movies, when I look at every movie that's been released so far, the only movie in my mind that really fits what Captain Marvel is as far as, uh, you know, an introduction to a new character that's had no, uh, you know, has had no setup whatsoever is the numbers that came in for Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange is the last real MCU film that we've had that introduced a new character that's been completely new. Some people will say, oh, Black Panther. No, Black Panther had a very big role in Civil War, was introduced in Civil War, made people want to go see Black Panther in the eventual Black Panther movie. And so that film, making over a billion dollars, set up Black Panther to be successful, definitely helped it. Captain Marvel has only been seen, her, you know, just her symbol has been seen on a pager. There's been no real setup for her even existing. As I said, her comic as Captain Marvel, only has been around since 2012. So there really isn't this groundswell of support. There really isn't this huge background for her that exists. And so the only other character that's had a release recently, a singular character who's had a release recently, would be that of Doctor Strange that made $677.7 million. Now, of course, when you adjust it to inflation, because that was a couple years ago, it ends up being around 700, over, a little over $700 million. And so people might, people might say, why don't I think it's going to make more than Doctor Strange? Because Doctor Strange didn't have all of this going on behind the scenes. And Doctor Strange was a weird film. And the fact that people have gone on set to Captain Marvel and said, oh yeah, you know what? It's, it's kind of like a, it's a mixture of Guardians of the Galaxy and Winter Soldier. Those are two very completely different films. And if that is indeed the case, and Captain Marvel already has a problem with having multiple directors and writers, and we're going to get very different types of film throughout that's going to affect the pacing... It might not end up well for it. So as I said, I still stand by my prediction of 450 to 650. I will make an official number. like I will make an official statement on that once we get those opening weekend totals. But isn't it interesting that the first weekend we got it, the first weekend that the tickets went on sale, all you heard about constantly for that few days, for those first few days, was this is going to break records at the box office. 
And then people started to remind them, you said the same thing about Solo, and then it lost money. And now since January, since like the beginning of January, you have not heard anything about speculation as to how much money this is going to make. As I said, I still think it's going to make profit. The question is, how much profit does it make? And also, even if it makes profit, even if it makes over $650 million, is it going to be showing the MCU going in a direction similar to Star Wars? And if that is the case, will we see something similar happen with MCU fans as we saw with Star Wars fans? So, once again, this video is dedicated to all of the trolls out there in this universe. And hopefully, if you actually watch this video, you understand a little bit more about why it is that I have total justification to have these concerns, to have these worries, but also, too, to show you that you're just a complete idiot if you choose to make a comment on a video that you choose not to see and to say these words that I never said and take things out of context. Because now the people that actually watch my videos know who you are and will have the data to be able to say, hey, no, he said this. And he knew that you would say this. So, good luck to anyone that's going to try and troll this video. Good luck. Anyway, guys, thank you all so much for watching. If you liked this video, smash that like button. Give me a subscribe. It helps me out a lot. You are all amazing and beautiful people. And again, for the question for the people that actually watch these videos, how much money do you think this is going to make? Do you think that they're putting too much into it? Again, this whole video, this or rather this, this article right here, as you've been able to read yourself, says that there's a good chance that Captain Marvel is probably going to have a trailer during the Super Bowl. Again, those trailers cost a lot of money to put out there to promote. You know, most of the time we say that the overall marketing budget is about half of the production budget. This very well could be a situation since the marketing has been so robust that it could be even more than that. Are they going to make that return on their investment? Because even if they make that $400 million, again, that's breaking even. If they spend more on marketing than I predicted, again, more than that 50% that I already put in to that account, they could need to make 425 450 in order to break even. And then that overall total begins to look less and less impressive. So is this going to be enough? Do you think this movie is going to make enough money based solely on the fact that you, we have a history of the comic book character? We already know that there's already some questions and doubts being asked because of the way the trailers have been marketed and the way that the media has been talking about it. And also, too, what it means for the future of the MCU. What do you think is going to happen? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. And as always, God bless.